I'd like to call the Glassboro Zoning Board of Adjustment regular business meeting to order for February 16th, 2023. Terry, can you please read the opening statement? Pursuant to the Open Public Meetings Act, I hereby announce that adequate notice of this meeting as required by said act has been provided by adopting the schedule of regular monthly meetings for the year 2023, which schedule was posted on the Borough Hall Bulletin Board, mailed to the South Jersey newspapers, and filed with the Borough Clerk. Everybody, please rise for the salute to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Can we have the roll call, please? Mr. Ellis. Here. Mr. Moonen. Here. Ms. Camiola. Here. Mr. Yep. Harvey. Present. Mr. Jimenez. Mr. Santor. Here. Mr. Smith and Mr. Perner are excused. Ms. Wyman. Here. Mr. Casaboon. Here. Ms. Corbin. Here. Okay. Mr. Ellis. Oh, uh, Mr. Chairman, if I may, a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, you'll notice on the agenda there are two applications uh, for consideration tonight. Well, uh, we hear that the uh, applicant, they've reached out to a South Jersey gas company. It's known as ZB23-01103 Union Street. This is uh, an application for preliminary and final major site plan with uh, bulk C variants to construct an array of ground-mounted solar panels. Uh, they ask that it be pushed to the next meeting. Our next meeting would be March 16, 2023. And they ask that we make an announcement that no further notice will be given I'm sorry, it's actually April. They've asked they're, to go to April. They're pushing it out to April? Yes, April they are. And when? April 20th, I believe. Okay. Is the next that meeting. All right, so I stand corrected. Uh, our secretary just informed us that it's April 20th. April 20th is the hearing that the South Jersey matter should be heard at. Uh, we have every expectation it will be. Is anybody here for South Jersey Gas for that application? Okay, well, no one's responding, but in any event, there'll be no further notice given. If you wish to be heard on that, back here, April 20, 7 o'clock, and uh, we'll see what uh, what happens then. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Uh, Chair. Uh, Mr. Ellis, can you swear in our professionals? Please? Yep, indeed. And I ask each of, you, each of you to raise your right hand, and do we, each of you swear a firm testimony about to give us true and correct the best knowledge, information, and belief? Yes. yes I that was two yeses. Mr. Chair, take it away. Okay, everybody has a copy of the minutes. Are there any comments, concerns, or any changes that need to be made? If not, do I have a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So be it. Everybody has a list of the bills. Move we pay the bills. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So be it. Do we have any incoming or outgoing correspondence? No. All right. Public comments for non-agenda items only. Is there anybody here from the public that has anything that's not on our agenda for this evening? Okay. Let's move on to our first application. ZB 23-02 PBA Investments 149 to 151 South Del Delcy Drive, Lot 428, Lot 11, 7Z4. Looking for a preliminary and final site plan approval to allow two 20, 20 unit apartment buildings along with refinishing four apartments in an, an existing building on the property. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. My name is Bob DeSanto and I represent the applicant PBA investments in connection with this matter. We are here tonight seeking three approvals. The first approval is re being requested is an extension of the use variance granted on January 20, 2022 by this board to permit the 40 units and the refurbishing of the four unit existing building. We are also requesting a minor modification of that use variance approval and you will hear testimony in that regard as a result of the wetlands delineation the applicant needed to reconfigure the building so instead of two 20 unit buildings we are requesting one 18 unit building and one 22 unit building still totaling 40 but the work around the wetlands reconfiguration 
needed to be changed and we were requesting a minor modification. And of course the third request is for site plan approval, preliminary and final with such waivers and variances as will be requested. Regarding the first request, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Ellis, by letter dated September, December 28, 2022, before the expiration of the variance approval, I submitted a request for an extension to January 20, 2024, a one-year extension of the use variance approval for the reasons stated in that letter. If the board requires testimony verifying those reasons, Mr. Romari and Mr. DiVitro are here tonight to provide that testimony. Otherwise, we respectfully request the board to grant the request based upon the reasons set forth in that December 28 letter. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, the applicant's request is entirely routine. Um, quite frankly, honestly, people usually have less of a quality reason uh, than uh, this gentleman and this applicant. They have genuine uh, delays, not surprising, from the state of New Jersey and the uh, governmental agencies. So understanding that, I think it would be um, worthy of the board's consideration to be um, considerate in that regard in granting the, uh, the extension. Um, do you want us to handle that independently, separately? It's the board's pleasure, Mr. Ellis, whatever you okay, decide. Okay, because I think it's implicit. Cleaner, yeah. Well, I think yeah. it's implicit in going forward that um, if, if the, Mr. Chairman, I'm sorry. Uh, You're right. right. I want to take care of it right now. Okay, good. Um, I think, of course, it would require a five vote. Yep. All right, do I have a motion to approve the extension? I make a motion to approve the extension. Do I have a second? Second. Roll call, please. Mr. Harvey. Four. Mr. Santor. Four. Ms. Wyman. Four. Ms. Camiola. Four. Mr. Moonen. Four. Thank you. Appreciate it very much. As I said, regarding the second request for a modification, we will provide testimony unless you want me to do that separately, Mr. Chairman. I'll do it separately and then we'll go on to the site plan. Mr. Chairman, my recommendation would be that that gets needed into yeah. the presentation with the expert testimony. Let's that wrap it all would only make sense. Okay, fine. Thank you. Again, may I ask that Mr. DeVitro, Mr. Hogg, Mr. Hertz, and Mr. O'Malley be sworn. They will be our witnesses tonight. Well, certainly. Whomever plans on testifying or may testify, stand up, raise your right hand, and we'll have you all introduce yourselves in a moment. But do each of you swear a firm testimony about to give us true and correct, best your knowledge, information, and belief? I do. All right, so that's four yeses. So for no particular reason, can we just start at this end? And, sir, would you just tell us who you are and why you're here? Patrick Hirsch. I am an architect. Well, thank you, sir. Um, and Mr. DeVitro, welcome back. And we know you are the professional planner and Pietro Mari, the owner of PVA Investments. Thank you and welcome back. And Mr. Mr. Hogg. Yes. And you were serving as the engineer here. And the stormwater whisperer. <laughs> All right. Well, welcome everybody. Mr. Chairman, take it away. Go ahead. Thank you. Chairman, uh, Mr. DeVitro testified last time and was qualified as a, an expert. And, and in fact, Mr. De, De, DeVitro did testify last time, Mr. Chair, and a number of other times, and is well known to this board. Yes. Um, and sure. Professional. He's acceptable. Thank you. I may have that marked as A1, Mr. Chairman, the site plan. So you got a colorized um, sheet? One or two, Ron. Two, two of the uh, site plans. Mr. Hirsch, one and eight two would be okay. A one and eight two. Would you please summarize for the board the site plan layout for the project? Give an overview of the, of the site plan. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Could you do me a favor and just turn that a little bit so yeah, Mr. Yeah. Harvey can see? Thank you. It would be a turn. Just tilt it a little. I don't know whether 
the public wants to see it or turn it towards the board, if we could do it that way, that's yeah. easier for the board. Okay. Good, Mr. Hunt. Thank you. Okay, uh, good evening everyone. This is uh, the site plan that's been presented for preliminary and final site plan. Uh, when we were before the board, it was December that we came for the variance and it was memorialized in January of 2022, 2022, I believe, right. Um, layout is Delcy Drive from the south side, or the, right, the south side of Delcy Drive uh, in the C4 zoning district. It's at the southern reaches of the central business district redevelopment zone of the project was presented in consistent with the C4 zoning criteria. At the time that we presented it, the board granted the variance for renovation of an existing building to four apartments, uh, demolishing and removing two vacant buildings at the front end of the site, and the development of 40 apartments. So we had 20 single driveway in with parking on either side, 20 on either side uh, with the parking, Subsequent to, and uh, additionally, a bulk variance was granted for the minimum width under the C4, minimum width of 250 feet. Uh, the property has a pre-existing 239 feet. With that, uh, we also asked for side yard setbacks, uh, reduction on either side. Both those were both granted as part of the prior application. Uh, subsequent to the application, we then went through and filed to do the wetland delineation, filed it with NJDEP. Uh, and then late last year, we received the uh, certification that this was the extent of wetlands here and the extent of wetlands at the rear of the property. Due to the wetlands here, we were forced to modify the layout slightly. So what we ended up was putting 22 units on the right side where we could fit them without encroaching in the wetland. And on the left side, we reduced that to 18. So not, there are two stories, so it's nine on one first floor, nine on the second floor on this side. Um, same thing, so two floor units. So that is the site plan layout. The design is for 40 new residential apartments, single entrance drive off of Delcy Drive into the site, parking laid out in the front of each of the apartments with additional overflow parking at the back. Um, we'll go through the planner's report as part of my presentation, but we provided landscaping. Uh, there's requirements for certain improvements and amenities. Uh, we've established at the rear an open recreation area with a gazebo, bench, bike rack, amenities for the residents, uh, also the trash enclosure. On the plan that we submitted, we designated the uh, cluster mailboxes at the rear, and we're now discussing whether we may move that in the front, but that would be a refinement of the plan with the uh, professionals. You're familiar with Ms. Patrick having the CIS report? I am. And have you prepared and sent to her a written response? I have, yes. And that's your letter of February 11, 2023, which I have handed out to the board and to the professionals? That's correct. All right. Could you take us through the response and provide your point-by-point -point response to Ms. Agnes? Well, I'd, I'd, rather than go through my response, I'd, yeah. I think I'd rather go through... Well, sure. okay. <laughs> I'll go. I provided this to the... To the <laughs> Let me, um, well, what, what Mr. DeVitro may be saying, and I don't want to put words in his mouth, is that he's just going to cherry pick what is discussable, so to speak, because other things may right, be... Right, there are certain uh, items that we've agreed That you're going to agree to and just uh, say, hey, that sounds like a good idea. So, basically, um, Ms. Addison's report itemized and went through the detailed plans and her itemized letter we have, and then I had responded to that. One of the issues was that we were subject to the redevelopment zone design criteria. Uh, upon my review of the redevelopment zone, we're in the, the redevelopment zone is the central business district and surrounding environs redevelopment zone. Uh, it was the whatever fourth amendment, I believe, that they incorporated the southern section of Delcy Drive uh, but the redevelopment zone references the C1 and C2 zone for design
design criteria. We happen to be in the C4 zone. This redevelopment zone definitively speaks to downtown, like retail on the first floor, residential on the second floor, buildings up against the front, the street for pedestrian access with parking behind. Um, that type of downtown redevelopment, which consistent with the C1 and C4 design criteria makes sense. I didn't believe that it was really applicable to our zone C4 at this location. Even though that was said, we went through Ms. Adamson's report, some of the design features of landscaping, pedestrian access, amenities that we could incorporate into the project we have were agreeable. So we're not asking for non-compliance or non not being consistent with the redevelopment plan, but the redevelopment plan really was speaking to a downtown redevelopment. Consequently, I'm asking for some way, certain as part of our application tonight, asking for some waivers and deviations from what the criteria is in the redevelopment plan. So there's a lot to be said. If it applies. <laughs> where it's applicable and where it's not applicable, we would be asked, we will be asking for some deviation from that criteria. That being said, now I could, I could go through if I would, uh, may. Um, and I think it may go a little faster. I'm following uh, Ms. Adamson's report of January 12th. Um, page two of rezoning requirements B is just an outline of where we were compliant, what was pre-existing conditions and what was previously granted on the variances uh, under the RS, RSIS was the parking requirements and the plans are in compliance with the RSIS parking requirements. So that we're not asking for a waiver or variances to the parking. Uh, item C on the Roman numeral two were the notes uh, one and two were agreeable to. Uh, item three, performance standards. Uh, A, one and two is were agreeable. B is parking and loading. Uh, item one, two, were agreeable. Uh, item three was a testimony that should the parking spaces be marked for the, or assigned to the residents and they would not be assigned. So we will not, it was a question and clarification rather than having assigned parking spaces to these departments. Uh, preferences not to have them assigned. The design obviously is people like to park in front of their units and they'll work that out amongst the residents. Uh, item four, we're agreeable. Item five is the redevelopment plan and we're asking for a deviation of that, if I may. Uh, the redevelopment plan parking lot shall be designed to accommodate and encourage safe and convenient pedestrian and bicycle movement. <coughs> Landscaping and buffering should be used abundantly to minimize street view of the parking lots. Parking lots should be placed behind buildings where possible, primary building frontage and orientation shall be towards the street. The design does not address these requirements. And again, the redevelopment plan, I'm going to, by mail, go to A2, which is just an enlargement of the site plan. Obviously, the state highway is here as our road frontage. For a downtown area, your building would be up against the street, parking behind it doesn't work here, it's inconsistent with our design. Uh, so we're asking for, hopefully I help Mr. Alice, uh, performance standards B5, a deviation from the redevelopment plan requirement. Item C is pedestrian circulation. Uh, again, these are re redevelopment criteria uh, we have amended and we will amend the plan to address these where we can and where it's appropriate but not 100% consistent with what the redevelopment plan design standards ask for and consequently would ask, I don't know if it's 
the partial deviation or qualification that the uh, compliance subject to arts working with the planner's office. Item uh, D is the planting design. Uh, items one and two were agreeable to work with the planner to refine the landscape and some of the details on the landscape and uh, just minor refinements to the landscape. We're okay with that. Uh, item three were agreeable. Item four were agreeable. Item five and six, again, are screen planning. Is it with First to landscaping, uh, providing around the perimeter parking areas, uh, planning strips separating the parking areas of 20 cars, uh, be less than 10 feet in width. Uh, we're not fully compliant, so we're asking for those, from those sections waivers from the strict compliance, but we'll work with the planners uh, in refining our landscaping plan. Item seven, uh, again, uh, from the ordinances, the all parking areas shall have at least one tree, at least three and a half inch caliper for every five parking spaces in single bays. Uh, of the total parking spaces, 17, 17 trees are required. Uh, we are asking for a waiver of that requirement. That's section 107.48.1C5. Uh, due to the restrictions on the wetlands and the way we had to lay out the parking, we have provided for landscape for areas sporadically through the parking to break the parking lot up. The landscape areas will have landscaping in them. Uh, we'll likewise have the parking lot lighting in them and certain ones will have the electric or the EV charging stations in them. Uh, but we're not able to facilitate the one tree, the specifics of one tree for every parking space in, in the island areas that we well, have. Well, it says one tree um, per every five parking spaces. Correct. So are you saying no trees or are you saying one tree per ten parking spaces or something totally different? In these areas we have no trees around the rear uh, and in the front we do have trees. So, okay. so, so would you agree that when you said a moment ago that the applicant agrees to work with the board professionals on finalizing the landscaping plan, that that would be part of it? That's correct. Okay. That's, then I think we're okay. Uh, item eight, we are agreeable. Item nine, uh, again, is the detail of landscaping. Multifamily developments require supplemental landscaping in addition to street trees, parking lot plannings, and buffer requirements. Any combination of the following shall be provided for each of the dwelling units. Uh, one tree, there's this breakdown of the different trees. Uh, again, we'll work with the planner partially comply with it, but we cannot meet strict compliance. With right, it. you're going to do your best. Correct. Yeah, and that's, uh, that's the idea. Uh, likewise, for item 10, uh, street trees shall be provided in addition to other tree planting requirements. The applicant proposes evergreen trees. Plans should be revi revised or a waiver. We will work with the planner on what trees get planted where. Item 11, we're agreeable to comply with. Item 12 is a uh, stipulates buffer areas required along all lot lines that separate single family and multifamily residential uses uh, per the ordinance requirements. Uh, we're asking for a waiver of that requirement. Uh, on the property, both of them, I'll, show, I'll go back to A1. Uh, we show the aerial view. There was a residential property to the north and residential property to the south. Uh, what we've incorporated into the plan is landscaping behind the units in these areas and these areas. And we've agreed to supplement the landscaping uh, and we've provided for a six foot fence to be a visual barrier on both properties where the disturbance would be. So we extend from the building setback line at the front back to the wetland line on either side. Uh, so strict compliance in that we're asking for a waiver from supplemental fencing and uh, working with the landscaping plan. Uh, so you're saying you, you can't 
uh, install that fence the entire length? The yeah, the, re uh, the requirement uh, stipulates decorative fences, walls, and a landscaped area of not less than 10 feet wide. We're putting the decorative fence along the line. Uh, landscape berm, six feet high. We cannot put a berm right. in that limited area. Right. Uh, right. Building setback of at least 200 feet with a grade of less than 20% where groups of planting and trees are located not comply with the 200 and that's kind of already been addressed in the use variance but correct right correct uh, parking area shall be set back at least a hundred feet that is screened and required and likewise because of the configuration of the property and the use variance we would not be able to comply with that so this 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 is kind of what in my opinion might be driving your opinion that this was designed for a c1 zone not the c4 zone yeah, precisely all right all right I understand so I don't, I, for the board and our testimony is we're asking for a waiver of strict compliance. We, we've agreed with many of the landscaping items. Right, but fundamentally what you said is we're, we're, we're going to do our best to make this place look as good as possible, as buffered out as possible. We're going to work with the board's professionals, but obviously you look at it and you see what the topography is and what the wetlands are and what the dimensions are and you don't have a magic wand. Thank you. That's, 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 trying to convey what I was trying to. No, <laughs> no, no. no I, I just want to make sure I, I understand. Uh, item 13, uh, 25 foot reverse frontage buffer is required along Race Street frontage and shall consist of a double staggered rows of evergreen trees. Uh, it should be noted that Race Street is unimproved. Uh, back to A1. Uh, Race Street is back at this location on the site. Uh, there's two sections, our basin is here, two sections of wetlands, which is totally wooded. This is totally wooded, would not be disturbed. Ray Street is vacant, uh, it's, it's unimproved, uh, therefore we request a waiver of that requirement. Mm -hmm. Item 14, uh, 15, 16, and 17, uh, we're agreeable to work with the planner. Likewise with 18. Uh, under E, lighting, items one and two were agreeable. Item F was trash enclosure, solid waste management. Uh, the planner's comment was the applicant proposes to locate the trash enclosure in a prominent location at the terminus of the drive aisle, approximately 300 foot from the building A. An alternative location would be cons should be considered with this one the applicant should address whether uh, one enclosure is sufficient. Uh, because of the it's garden apartment design, uh, the single road, no matter where we put it, becomes a, an inconvenience. If we put it at the entrance, it's an inconvenience to this end. If we put it in the middle, now you're more or less a nuisance to those apartments that it's in front of. Uh, so we did, from the original design, we shifted it over to the side, but the enclosure would be back there. Uh, Consequently, we're asking for a waiver of the requirement to put it in a different location. Item F, trash enclosures two, three, and four were agreeable. Uh, item four was a testimony should provide how bulk trash, such as mattresses, furniture will be stored. Um, likewise, to the frequency or the size of the dumpster, uh, the property will be under a property management by the owner. Uh, they will have a private trash waste, uh, solid waste pickup. Uh, they will schedule that as necessary with the residents once it's occupied. Uh, item G, signage. Uh, we, we had not submitted the sign detail. There is a sign detail, but it would be a single identification, project identification sign along the frontage. And we're agreeable to supply that. It will be compliant with the signed ordinance by size and setback. So we have no objections to that. Uh, item H was fences. Uh, additional fencing around the basin we've agreed upon. We're agreeable with that. Uh, environmental impact was the providing the environmental study. The study was done and we'll furnish that to the professionals. Item J, architectural. Uh, Elevations of floor plans have been submitted to the professionals, uh, but Mr. Uh, Patrick 
Ken Hein Penz is here tonight to present the architectural. The miscellaneous uh, day, um, item one, five or more dwelling units, the applicant shall provide recreation facilities on site, the minimum area requirement for non Family, non family homes is 7.5% of the gross tract, approximately 16,890 square feet. Uh, no recreation facilities are proposed. Plan should be revised or a waiver may be requested and payment made in lieu. Uh, again, this is part of the redevelopment and uh, designation and the ordinance requirements for recreation because. Um, it is a garden apartment design which provided uh, for an open space, a large open space wetlands natural area, uh, gazebo, fence, bike rack, and some amenities. Uh, 30, I think 30 of the units or 33 of the units are one bedroom. Uh, we did not anticipate large families of children to be in a project. Uh, consequently, we're asking for a waiver of that requirement. Items two, three, and four other miscellaneous were agreeable. Uh, likewise, with five were agreeable. So that is my testimony in response to the planning report. Elongated, but I thought it was worthwhile trying to define the waivers that we were asking for. Happy to ask, answer any questions. Provision to K1. Um, that's something the ZBA cannot agree to. That has to go through the borough. Falls under Pella. That needs to be negotiated with the borough. Well, I think we had talked about that. I mean, oh, 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 sorry, the recreation K-1. Well, I think we had talked about that. Again, I'm, it's dangerous. I'm working off my recollection. But I thought that we actually had a direct uh, conversation that there's going to be, well, maybe it was another application we've had a couple of recently, yeah. But what, what the chairman's saying, I think it's clear. It's, that, that has to be negotiated with the borough for obvious reasons, because mm -hmm. the expectation is you're going to have some recreation there. If you're not going to have some recreation there, we're gonna have it somewhere. So we understand that the ordinance requires it and you have to respond. Listen, well I think the ordinance requires it and certainly this board's requiring it. So I, I think it's that simple. Uh, I mean I would dress it up, but what's the sense? Right. Yeah. It's where you're at. Price of admission. Among other things. So as if the if the So we're not gonna waive that. You're right. going to talk to the borough of Glassboro and see where they weigh in on this uh, as regards what they're interested in. And uh, if you need to come back to us, you'll come back to us. But the expectation is uh, I don't think you're going to need to come back to us because you don't want to do something on your site. You're saying right. you want an uh, alternate approach. Yeah. The alternate yeah. approach is going to come from them. The way the, the, way the ordinance is the code's written is, is either you provide the recreation in the area or you can make a payment in lieu. The, the and what we're saying is, is the board's not looking to take a position on that. It really no. would be the borough to take that position. Right. That's right. all. So, so we can look at a yeah. uh, projected population and sit with the borough. I'm sure they'll have a few questions. Exactly. So it'd be, that item would be subject to a resolution with the borough and then and letting the board be advised of that. Thank you. That's all I have. Mm -hmm. Any other questions from the panel? I know that I can tell. I was just wondering, are there any renderings of what they're going to look like, these buildings? Yes. Yes. I don't have, I, I don't have any. Renderings for the yeah, architect? The architect. Yes, the architect has the okay. architectural okay. drawings. Okay. 
Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Hunter. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Unless Mr. Hunter's been before the board before, I need to qualify Mr. Hunter. Oh, no, also well acquainted uh, with Mr. Hogg, just a top-notch uh, engineer, and uh, I know he's been before the board. You've been here before, right? Uh, I have been in front of Bathrop Planning Board and Zoning Board. Well, no, I know you've been in front of a million boards, but <laughs> yeah. I've been there with you. But have you been here? You've been here a couple of yes, times, I've right? Been in front, yes. Exactly, you're right. Welcome back. It's just, it's been a while for, for all of us, I guess. Are you familiar with uh, Mr. Cosimo's report dated January 13, 2023? Yes, I am. And would you provide the board with your engineering response to this comment? Okay, I think I can either do what Larry did or we can expedite that there's only a couple of items which will require waivers. The rest we've addressed in the response letter of dated uh, February 10th. Well, um, the, the Address letter is not in evidence. I so think what Larry did instead of using the letter, he addressed the point. I can do I can do that as well. I was just would that be okay? It, it's a well, in, indeed, and and in fact, we're going to incorporate you know your February ten response letters as part of your submission, All right, good. Uh, good. along with your December 28, twenty twenty two um, request for the uh, extension. Okay. So you you publish them to the board, and we'll take them as part of your submission package. Okay. So the question becomes, would you accept the, the letter in lieu of his testimony? No. Okay. Oh. No. That's why he's here. Talk? Do it. I'll talk. Yeah. Okay. In, in receipt of the January 13th letter pre uh, prepared by the zoning board engineer, uh, we go through the items one, one at a time. Um, item number one, we have provided the required uh, checklist, elevations, floor plans, traffic impact statement, environmental impact statement, they were all submitted to the, your professionals. Number two, a copy of the NJDEQ weapons LOI has been provided. And number three, a confirmation that the weapons buffer reduction was approved by DEP. The application has not been approved by DEP. Once it is approved, we will provide copies to the professionals. Plans have been revised, number four, to show the location, as previously testified by the planner, the location of the cluster mailbox, subject to the review and approval by the uh, United States Postal Service. Number five, I think I'll defer to the applicant to respond to, it is the, how the existing building is going to, how the operation of the construction is going to work around the existing building. Six. We have provided the required electrical vehicle parking. Seven, we've identified on the plans that the, all the units, the ground floor units, are going to have a concrete patio out the back. And all the door lo locations to them patios have now been identified on the site plans. Number nine is, a, this is where we're requesting for a waiver of providing curbing along the frontage along Delcy Drive. Currently the site, and within a couple hundred feet either direction of the site on Delcy Drive is not curbed. And it's a state highway subject to the jurisdiction of the NJDOT. And we feel that you know, there's no need to provide curb on that. And thus are requesting a waiver. Why do you feel that it's not required? The adding curb would then concentrate drainage and now once this curb in there now we have to dip the storm water which currently runs down the highway highway currently drains in a southerly direction it would concentrate any water on the highway to a point where it would then have to be picked up managed and brought into the site which would then create a not not sorry difficulty but the Can I jump in here, Mr. Yeah, Chairman? Yeah, please oh, Okay, do. thank you. Um, so <laughs> this is, not, you're speaking about number nine, is that correct? Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, well that wasn't curb, that was referring to side Oh, walls, sorry, I've jumped. Curb. Ten yeah, is, num number ten, ten was related to, to curb, number nine was related to sidewalk. 
So the ordinance does require, I said in the section, the sidewalk to be provided for really all, all developments. So I, I think it was it's advisable for this project to include sidewalk. Um, acknowledging the fact there's no immediate connection, but you know, my feeling with sidewalk always is if you know, it's, it's in the ordinance and you know, you, you've got to start somewhere with building pedestrian, you know, pedestrian linkage. So this would be, it is a residential uh, building obviously and, and sidewalk across the front end could potentially be beneficial. And we discussed that the previous. It was, yeah, that was discussed and in fact agreed to at least during testimony um, yeah. informally at the youth village hearing. So, so let's, so let me see if I understand what you're saying. Sidewalk, yes, curb, not necessarily? I think curb could be, sometimes sidewalk necessitates curb as a safety feature to, to create a little bit of more defined road. But I would, I would defer to DOT on whether they would actually require a curb or not. I don't see a reason to, to require the curb if DOT is okay without it. Just maybe I should do so. so I guess there, there are two different, uh, there, bo both of those elements, either the concrete curb along the frontage or the sidewalk along the frontage would be within the DOT right away. And I'm sure the applicant is, has or will pursue an access permit for that um, driveway. Um, I'm not sure how DOT would, re you know, if they would require a curb, they, they might require it. I, I, don't, I don't know. Um, and that's kind of why I'm, I'm struggling a little bit with you know, what, what the best what the best um, design design is. Well, Mr. Chairman, I think Mr. Kosman put a little finer point on it. So I think the threshold issue for the board is uh, there was an expectation, uh, if I'm understanding things, of sidewalk. Uh -huh. So if that's the case, then the board may wish to require sidewalk, not take a position on curb, understanding that, for better or for worse, like it or not, the New Jersey DOT may require that curb, right. and that would be another one of those life in a big city things, um, or if uh, the board feels otherwise. But, uh, Mr. Chairman, for your consideration in the board. You must wind that out now because mm -hmm. it's kind of a. Uh, I guess it ties. Um, what kind of a population do you expect in the apartments? Do you expect small children? Like younger children, where a school bus would have to be coming and picking them up. So there's 32 that are. I'm sorry. There's 32 one bedrooms, and there's only uh, eight two bedrooms. So we're looking more professionals, you know, single professionals or a husband and wife. So it's not. I, it, there's only like the eight units that would have possibility for a child. Okay. You know, the, the four existing units. There's two bedrooms, so that that would play into factor too. And then there's another one bedroom and uh, three bedroom. So I mean, for as far as a lot of children, I don't know. Maybe those those nine units, I think ten units together. The other ones are all one bedrooms. They're going to be kids. It's not. Gonna yeah, there's going to be kids. So I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Right, but it's the amount of them, whether they would be all standing out on a street in the mud or waiting for their school bus or. You know. We wouldn't want that anyway, so we would do whatever we have to do. If, I mean, if there's kids, obviously going to be, you know, tenants too. So I think Larry, we said something we would put a, a shelter for them or something. Yeah, we did. Yes, I was going to say to respond to the issue of the school, the school students, whether there is any or not, we've designated on the site plan an area where there will be a shelter placed, such that they can stand on the bus shelter on Long Delphi Drive to get picked ah. up. Okay, thank you. How many would be able to stand under that shelter? How many could stand under the shelter? I don't think I've actually sized the size of the shelter yet. Well, what I'm saying is we don't know how many kids are going to be there, and you can't have, if there's 20 kids, you can't have to fill for five. I mean, that's what I'm asking. We would, I think we've, and we've done this before, we've talked to the school board once the projected students are there, what kind of shelter they would want. Okay. The shelters come pretty much prefab, okay. uh, but don't anticipate, and the school board typically would not pull a school bus inside the development when it's a dead end street. As a parking lot of a garden apartment, they would pick up along Delphi Drive. Right. So I, it's 
were agreeable to do it, I think it would probably be subject to discussing with the Board of Education or the school board who handles that, what they would prefer to see. Okay. Okay. So where do we stand? Well, my feeling is this, and if you're going to put a sidewalk in, you're going to need a curb, because you're going to need handicap access to that street, because you don't know if any of the residents could be handicapped, and they have need wheelchair access. There's a couple of marked off handicapped places. Right. So... For the sidewalk, you're going to need a curb to access the handicap ramp. Or an apron. An apron, yeah. Well, the, re the request for the curb, that's only along Delta Drive, correct? That's not throughout the... No, it's just okay. Delta Drive. Okay. If you're going to put a sidewalk in there... Well, but the curb, where, where, the, where the crosswalk would be across the proposed entrance, there mm -hmm. is curb there, because the entrance is curved out until it intersects with the edge of pavement on Delta Drive. So there would be curbs in, the, in that area, at least, at least where the crosswalk is. So an apron would have to be put in, correct? You mean like a ramp? Uh, yeah, a ramp, a ramp would have to be put in, right. A, a ramp or at least a, an opening in the curb. It, it could be a ramp, you can do it a couple ways, but the, the, the curb would have to be depressed in a way that allows access, yeah. If we put a curb there, the curb's already there. All the way, not all the way across the front, though, is it? No. Now, the nearest curb, I believe, is in front of the warehouse, uh, uh, U Haul. South Dorage Place. That's the nearest curb on our side heading towards town. So uh, now, inside the inside the project, there's going to be sidewalk and curb, right? In yes. front of each apartment's door for coming We're and going. We're talking on Delcy Drive. So it's only Delcy Drive that's this, that has this issue. And my initial plan would be, we, if we were to put the typical sidewalk consistent with what's on in front of the warehouse or the self-storage would be the sidewalk would be set back so six feet plus or minus from the edge of the shoulder of the road and then a depressed curb crosswalk across our driveway but the sidewalk would just terminate at the common property lines to the north and to the south there'd be no connection from the sidewalk where it ends into back onto Delcy Drive I don't feel that we should put the sidewalk or it's safe to put a sidewalk connector pushing people back into the shoulder of Delcy Drive. And I think that's what the ordinance contemplates, a sidewalk across the frontage of the property, not not extending out, not, not, not yeah. searching to find a connection point, but just to place it as part of this project. Well, you realize one thing, the area is, is, is really growing. Uh, as, 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 as we continue to develop, I think across the street you got land and sea, I see people with a lot of bicyclers. I don't see uh, skateboarders, uh, the whole nine yards up and down Delcy Drive. My concern is uh, just the safety. So much is going on as we pump up the uh, apartments, traffic going in and out. We have to do, we have to do all that we can to uh, think in terms of the whole community. So I, I'm wanting with that, that uh, saying, hey, if we had made mention of having sidewalks before, I, I really don't feel safe. Uh, I really don't feel comfortable. You know, talk I about, agree. Talking about bypassing that. Right. Well, listen, I think we're going to, you know, we're not getting any here. So here's the deal um, sidewalk, yes. And curb, yes? Yeah. So it's a yes, yes. Sidewalk, and curb. As we go, she drives. Agreed. Yeah. Okay. Let's move on. Number 10 saying, yes, we will now provide sidewalk. Uh, sorry, curve, number 10. 
Number 11, uh, prior testing was provided on how the track was picked up. Dumps are located at the rear of the site. It's going to be private track. Number 12, we've previously confirmed that there will be a development sign consistent with the ordinance. The required, number 13, required site triangles have been added to the plans. And number 14, a note was added to the plan stating that the required asphalt drawings will be provided. Number 15, we've identified an existing street light on the opposite side of Delcy Drive, which will provide the required lighting at the intersection. The landscape plan was revised to show plantings and ground coverage near the front doors of the units. And that completes site, site plan layout and circulation section. Now moving on to the grading, drainage, stormwater management section. Number one, we've revised the site plan, the, the plans to comply with the cross slope of the sidewalk between units eight and nine. Number two, we've provided additional spot grades on the sidewalk in front of the buildings and then the patios at the rear. Number three, we've provided spot grades around the buildings to verify a minimum 5% slope for the first six feet. Number four, we've added an insert at the sidewalk at a larger scale to, to depict the grading. Number five, the stormwater management has been report, uh, revised to address the runoff, the off-site runoff from drainage area number one and number two. Uh, the grading plan has been revised to address the low point around contour 143. Number seven, the runoff calculations have been revised to identify the calculated time of concentration for each sub-area. Number eight, a quantity control comparison where the, each, where the existing drainage leaves the site has been provided in the drainage report. Number nine, we've clarified that the stormwater pump shown on the grading plan is only temporary and to be used during uh, construction. Number, number 10, we've added, uh, no, that's number 10, number 11, number 11, we've added the drainage area, curve numbers, and time of concentration on to the pre and post development drainage area plans. Number 12, the estimated seasonal high has been added on the cross section for the infiltration basins. Number 13, a scale cross section of the rain gardens have been provided. The seasonal high will, will be provided later once we need to do some additional field work. Number 14, the maximum, the, uh, maximum design. Okay, the rain gardens have been designed such that there's only 12 inches of maximum depth of 12 inches of water. Number 15, we provided groundwater mounding calculations in the hydrological report. Number 16, we've provided a statement demonstrating how we meet both the state's green water infrastructure and the borough's stormwater ordinance. Number 17, we've provided justification of why we have to infiltrate all the storm events. Number 18, we will, we will provide additional soil testing and groundwater for the two areas of the uh, rain gardens. Number 19, the basin has been provided to include a floor bay. The appendices in the hydrological study have been updated as required. The drain time calculations for the rain gardens have been provided. A copy of a draft maintenance plan has been provided. A description of the stormwater management BMPs must be recorded, we agree, so that's a note. Number 23, uh, yeah, number 20, that was number, 20, number 24, We've added a note on the bottom of the plan as required in indicating that if compaction occurs, the soil should be tilled prior to the placement of sand. We've added a note indicating number 25 that infil post construction infiltration tests are required. And number 26, the stormwater maintenance plan has been revised to include all the contact information and additional information that's been, requ has been requested. Moving on to uh, the utilities. The application will require both approval from Glasgow Water and Sewer Department for water and sewer, and we know we have to submit the applications for that. Then last, the construction details. We've provided updated construction details for the striping with material specifications. We provided number two, a detail of the trash enclosure. 
We revised the trash enclosure to include a self-latching gate. We provide a typical construction detail of the construction detail of the rain garden. And we provided a detail of the uh, roof drain connection to the six inch PVC collection pipes. And miscellaneous, we agree that we'll provide all outstanding agency approvals upon receipt. Questions? Yeah. I'm glad to ask uh, Mr. DeVitro one thing. Uh, you call him? Sorry? Mr. DeVitro, the board required traffic impact studies. Has that been Can you speak up a bit with yes, the background noise? I, can. I, think I asked Mr. DeVitro if, um, if we have provided to the professionals the traffic impact study and he would summarize that. Uh, yes, it's part of the review. The professionals had asked for a traffic study, uh, and it was a comment during our variance application for the traffic study. Uh, a traffic study was prepared by Horner and Cantor Associates. Uh, Mr. Horner had a conflict tonight and could not attend, but his traffic impact study has been submitted to the professionals. Uh, we have reviewed it, uh, and, and his conclusion he did a full-blown traffic study, traffic counts on Delcy Drive, peak hour, trip generation, turning movements in and out of the project. Uh, just to highlight, uh, I think I could, uh, his highlight of the traffic study was AM peak hour would be nine cars coming into the project, AM peak hour would be 27 vehicles leaving. Uh, for a total of 36 p.m. peak hours would be 25 vehicles come turning into the project uh, and 14 cars leaving the project for a total of 39 vehicles. Uh, and the conclusion was the uh, proposed development would have no adverse impact on the existing highway traffic. Uh, it is funny it's on state highway. We're subject to an access permit submission to DOT. Uh, but the, his conclusion would be AM peak was how many in, how many out? Uh, AM peak, total of 36 in, and PM peak hour out, uh, was total of 39. He defines peak hour, if you would be. Peak hour AM is 7 AM to 9 AM, and peak hour PM is 4 PM to 6 PM. Yeah, yeah I apologize, I'm just a little slow tonight, but I've got uh, the PM peak, 25 in, 14 out. I just asked you for the AM, 36 in, how many out? Okay, try it again. I, I couldn't say, I think it was the wrong one. Yeah, <laughs> something, yeah. yeah. AM think. peak, 6 AM, or whatever the, uh, did I just say 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. It would be nine vehicles in and okay. 27 out. There you go. What that? 36. Perfect. PM peak would be 25 in, people coming home obviously, and 14 out for a total of 39. There you go. We got it. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions by the board? Mr. Hurst, what is your profession or occupation? I am a licensed uh, professional architect. Do you hold licenses in the state of New Jersey for architecture? Yes. Okay. 
It, I don't know why we're all whispering tonight. Just keep your voice up because it's a little harder in here for us to hear you. I will. So you know, we're not going to bother anybody or wait. We're it tonight. So loud as you want. <laughs> Thank you. Were you engaged by the applicant to prepare architectural plans in connection with this project? Yes, I was. And did you personally prepare the architectural and its elevation plan submitted to the board? Yes, I did. Have you previously testified before land use boards in New Jersey as an expert? Yes, I have. And on how many occasions approximately? Three occasions. Three prior occasions. Mr. Chairman, I request that Mr. Hurst be qualified as an expert in architecture. Sounds like he is. Let's see. Uh, I'd like to mark, you have one exhibit or two there? I have three exhibits. Three. Yeah, I have to mark A3, 4, and 5. Sure, sure. Well, while you're doing that, why don't you identify what, what you're marking when you're marking A3 and A4 Four. and A5? A3 is the building number B, which is, which is the smaller 18-unit uh, building. Exhibit A4 is the larger of the buildings, which is the 22-unit building. These are the floor plans. Presumably A. And Correct. Exhibit. Building A? Sorry? I, I said it's presumably Building A, right? Uh, building C. Building That's a. Building C. The building A is the little one? The little one up Correct. Right. It's gotcha. the little existing right. building. Correct. There you go. Exhibit A5 are the exterior elevations. Could you summarize for the board, please? plans and the elevations. Yes, um, exhibit A3, building B, uh, this uh, floor plans of the smaller building, approximate dimensions of the building, 42 feet deep, 193 feet 6 inches long. Uh, we have, on this building, we have a total of 18 uh, units. Four of the units are two bedrooms. And all of the interior units, 14 of them, are one-bedroom units. Um, all of the entrances to every unit is from the front. They all have covered, covered porches. All of the bedrooms are located at the front of the building. The main living, dining, and kitchen areas are all uh, open to each other in the back of the building, uh, which also have access to the rear patio area through a sliding glass door. Um, there's also a HVAC a small bump out in the back of each unit for the utilities. Two of the units, of the smaller units in each building are ADA accessible. Uh, the only difference between these units and the rest of them would be slightly larger bathrooms to accommodate uh, wheelchair accessibility, larger doors, <coughs> as well as uh, specific uh, placement of uh, countertops along the kitchen, uh, all uh, for, uh, for accessibility reasons. Exhibit A4, this is the larger building, the 22 unit building is essentially the same with the addition of extra two units on each floor of the smaller units. Both of the end units in each building are the larger uh, two bedroom apartments. This building also has two uh, units uh, which are ADA accessible. 
There is also, uh, I forgot to mention on the previous, uh, both, both of the buildings have office slash storage area on the left side, uh, which is uh, a common space. to the exterior elevations. Um, given the size and the rectangular shape of, the, of each building, our emphasis on the design of the exterior elevations was to provide complex massing with a traditional feel by modulating the facade to give the appearance of several smaller scale buildings. And we have done that by providing different uh, scale uh, dormers, uh, entry porches with different roof lines and projections along with traditional finished materials. Now some of these traditional uh, uh, materials include doors, uh, six panel doors, uh, windows with uh, a traditional grid pattern moldings around the windows and the doors. They're both uh, three and a half inch uh, on the sides and the bottom of the windows with a, a five and a half inch board as a header uh, slash lintel over the top of each window. Uh, some of the uh, material finishes that we're proposing for this project consist of stacked stone veneer a four inch vinyl siding, uh, board and batten uh, hardy plank type material, and a lot of ASIC material. Uh, as you can see on these dormers here, uh, ASIC wraps around the windows, the doors. Uh, also, uh, standing seam metal roofs over the front entry porches. and uh, the roof shingles are proposed to be uh, on over all, the, all of the main and the large roofs, uh, architectural grade asphalt uh, shingles. Uh, all of the roofs have uh, 12 inch overhangs or eaves with vinyl soffits. Again, all of the material selections are to provide a traditional uh, feel. I, I believe that our design is consistent with the design guidelines and will be aesthetically pleasing uh, addition to the glass wall community. I'll be happy to take any questions. I have a follow-up question for you. Yeah. Would you explain to the board the maximum height Yes, um, original submittal to the board, the top of the ridge was at 34 feet. We were just informed that the max height limit here is 30 feet. So this elevation drawing has been revised to show the maximum 30 foot requirement. In Ms. Adlinson's January 12 report, section J, architectural. Number one, architectural elevations and floor plans should be provided. That's what you've just done. Yes. Number two, the request is to uh, address architectural features, roof pitch, and facade treatments, which you've done. Number three, uh, equipment services, whether roof mounted or ground plate, shall be screened by architectural or landscape, architectural design. Will all mechanical equipment be screened? And how will it be done? As far as the AC condensers, um, I don't uh, know if that was noted on the site plan. It was. It, so, the, and I don't want to take away from your testimony, the mechanical units are interior um, enclosed units in the building itself, 
The only thing that would be outside is the compressors for air conditioner. Our plan has provided fencing in, adi in addition to the six foot property line fence for privacy from the neighbors. Uh, we provided a four foot fence in front of where the condensing units would be to screen those also. And that's shown on the plan. Thank you. That's all I have for this witness, Mr. Sherry. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you. That concludes my presentation. Can I ask a, a general question? Go ahead. What's your timeline for starting, finishing, when people would start moving in? The existing four units were in the process with the construction officials and working out that uh, those things. So we were, we we're thinking about getting that rented ASAP. I mean, we're looking hopefully within the next couple months to have tenants in there and give temporary parking and be able to put a barrier up where they have temporary parking now before construction starts. Everything else depends on you know state, uh, all the utilities stuff coming in. When we can start, I mean, we want to start as soon as possible. Well, if, if you're going to need a permit from New Jersey DOT, are you going to be able to do what you're fixing to do? <laughs> that four unit piece? What do you mean? Yeah, I mean, if we have to change it after, I want to be able to, I don't want to keep it empty. I mean, well, as we far get as that. I mean, you wouldn't be here, right? No, no. I mean, as far as like, we would, I'm going to, as best we can with Larry design something where it's temporary parking, where it's safe for everyone, we would put up barriers or, you know, what we need to do. So I think your response is as soon as, uh, as, soon as you're ready, willing, and able to complete the project, no impediment, but for various governmental requirements yes. or approvals. Yes. Was that a right. sure. Okay. I was just wondering, that existing building, like these are gonna be brand new and they look very nice. Is, what are you going to do with the existing building? Because it doesn't look same materials. We're trying okay. to match everything what's there. It's a block. So building. it's going to mimic. It's going to mimic. Yeah, that was in the use variance. That, oh, okay. that that was part of the um, okay. the program. Is that it's got to look like it all belongs there? Okay. Yeah. So it would. It, it's already. It has the ASAC around the windows, new windows. It has this. It's going to have a stone facade, same siding, same uh, actually a seam metal on the back, uh, overhangs over the doors. So okay. we're trying to get us. Let's start off with Miss Corbin. I'm starting to think this is a conspiracy. I know. So, so I'm trying to read lips right now. So, so use that microphone and yeah. tell us because we're dying. You know, you're new and we're dying to hear what you've got to say, and we're looking forward to it. Okay. And um, for their testimony, they are um, able to reduce that height to 30 foot because the 34 um, height would um, trigger a D6. For the parking um, in the site plan, they are utilizing the townhome um, requirements. However, they do still meet the um, requirements for the garden um, apartments. So that should be revised to reflect the requirements for the garden apartments. So the question is, are we on the architectural design or the building design or the site? Um, the site plan, I believe the zoning table on your site plan still reflects the townhome requirement for RFIS standards. We did look at, right, okay. uh, now I understand. The question was, is we complied with RSIS on the initial plans 
We use the requirements of townhome parking. Uh, we've confirmed the RSIS apartment, garden apartment parking, and we're still complying. So we do not need a variance. We'll, we are satisfying that requirement. For the existing building, do you expect the tenants of that building to also park in the general parking? Yes, it, 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 I, I know that's a question. Um, and, and part of the plans that were submitted, we submitted the plan, the existing survey and the existing building. Currently, um, okay. this, this building is an existing building and there are two buildings here. There was a paved driveway and a paved parking area that serviced all three buildings. Uh, Mr. Mari is going to demolish those two buildings. He's in renovating this. The existing paved area will remain. So as these, this building is renovated and occupied, the parking will remain up against the building. There will be a construction plan, an interim plan, so when all the approvals are in from DOT to actually build the project when this is occupied, this area will have to be preserved for those residents uh, while this is being constructed. At some point in time, they would have to be rearranged their parking while they demo that parking space and put the curb and sidewalk in. Geometrically, it fits, it works. It's just a transition through the construction. Thank you. And per uh, Mr. DiButro's uh, testimony earlier, there were several um, landscaping waivers that were requested, and I have no objection to those partial waivers. However, they, they are willing to... Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, you, you're the sheriff because mm -hmm. they agree to work with you, so you're going to figure it out, no doubt. If you have any problems, here we are, and you'll be back here. Okay. That's exactly right. We, yeah. We've worked no, with we the office it. before. And mm -hmm. Of course. Mm -hmm. Tweaking the landscaping can be done. Certain of those points, obviously, the conditions wouldn't allow it. Mm -hmm. And you spoke on the uh, location for the trash enclosure, but I don't believe that you spoke to the adequacy of the one trash enclosure on site. Is that enough for the 44 units? We've, we've set up the trash enclosure to facilitate the, uh, the normal, typical size enclosure. The property management will arrange for independent or private pickup uh, if the frequency has to increase or if the unit had to be enlarged. But if they're picking up, arranges to pick up two times a week, typically these should be sufficient for a garden apartment. The architect report that was submitted We have not prepared uh, these elevations yet. Okay. Will they be consistent with the yes, front facade? They, yes, okay. they will be consistent. Okay. And are you able to provide that at the this revised submissions? Yes. Okay, great. Yes. I believe that's all I have for now. Thank you. Next. Go Okay, I wanted to touch one more time just on the, the sequencing, especially with respect to the, the four unit building that's out there. So maybe if Mr. Amari could mention again. So the goal is to, to occupy the existing four unit building, but there, there would be no site work required for that. You would just use the driveway and parking area as it is. So it's kind of independent of this project in a way. Is that is that correct? No, it's going to tie all in together, but as for now? I mean right now, right. Yeah, yeah. And right now, it's independent of this project at this exact moment. Mm -hmm. So then the sequence, so really, there's no site work with it, so the, the sequencing would come whenever you get through your government approvals. When you, you're you're, you're speaking to like, there's no real phasing plan right. because you've right. got this little piece, right? Right, there's no there's no phasing plan for the little piece until they get to the point of construction. Right. So can the sequence, I would ask that that sequencing plan be made part of the, the land dimensions to add that to these plans just so we can see 
how it's going to switch over. Which makes sense to literally spell that out on the plan, that it, that's how it's going to work. Right, and, it, and it's, it's, it'll be tight, and that's why I'd like to see that it gets worked out now so that when the switchover happens, it's ready. So, so is there any we're objection? Ready. Yeah, we're agreeable. Okay. There you go. Thank you, Steve. And then just one more question on the on the buildings. Is there any lighting on the rear of the on the rear of these buildings, either security or maybe even just um, I'm assuming porch you know porch lights that would be on the back. Is that in, intended for this project? At this time, have you gotten that far? As far mm -hmm. as the architectural code, it requires us to have exterior lighting by each door. Okay. So each rear rear door will have extra light along with the fronts. As far as site lighting, that I cannot answer that. That okay. would be engineering. You know, that's the reason I asked. The, the the lighting plan shows all the parking lot lighting, all the site lighting, and there, but there's nothing represented in the back. So I guess the takeaway is there will be lighting in the back of the properties, but it will be limited to basically household level lights at each door. Top, you know, at all the different apartments, they each have a light. Engineer like to, to reply to that one? Well, I guess I was asking like flood spotlight, security lighting, is there anything beyond the, the light at the door? It sounds like there won't the be. The well, on, the, on the existing building, we did. So we, we put them on every, you know, around the building. If we have to, we put them on the I'm not asking for it. I was well, no, I, no, I think what Mr. Cox, yeah. Yeah. Mr. Okay. Chair, what he's saying is, what's the thought process on the applicant's side as to whether or not you have lighting or you don't, it appears you don't, so there must have been a thought process. What is that? Is that kind of yeah, where you were headed? Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah the, so I talked to Mr. Amari. He has exterior lighting, and they're not shown on the plan. We will add them. They would not be floodlights flooding out. They would be downlights, but they would light up the perimeter of the building as okay. security lighting. And you, you'll add those to the plan with some photometrics so we can see the still we can, Okay. We would add those. So there will be some more lighting than what was represented here in the back of the building. Okay. We're perfect. There you go. Okay, thank you. That was all I had, Mr. Chairman. Can I ask one question? Sure, go ahead. Uh, there is a bench and gazebo proposed to the back of, of the site. Is this the best um, location for it? Have you considered maybe placing it um, towards the front? Is there a space for these public amenities? I'm sorry, what was your question? <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. The location of the gazebo. We, What's the thought process in that? She said if we can move it forward. Yeah, including the bike racks, I think it would be right. more. So at, at the rear of the site, this area will be the nature area, which will be wetlands and untouched. Uh, the stormwater basin is over here. All of this wooded area will be retained. So this is more of the quiet, serene portion of the project. Therefore, we place the gazebo at the back of the development rather than up in the front. And that, there's a bench, and likewise, there's a bike rack back at that location. Since there's no questions of our professionals, I'm now going to open this up to the public. Do I have a motion to open the public portion? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So be it. Is there anybody from the public that has anything they would like to say about this? Please come forward, sir. Hey, how you doing? I want to ask you. I want to ask you to raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm testimony about to give us true and correct the best your knowledge, information, and belief? I do. Well, that's great. Thank you. And what is your name? My name is John McHugh. We own the properties on the west side of the project. So it seems uh, one of our main concern was having a. Bench. If you want to show the board, you can show us right where you're at on on one of the exhibits. Why don't you get the um, what's it A? The other one. There you go. Look at A. Mm -hmm. 
that we would be here, 145, 143, Delta Drive. You're 143? At 145. Gotcha. So it seems that um, they are going to put a fence along the borders of both property lines, correct? Mm -hmm. And where would the fence, how long is the fence? Is it the full length of the project? So let's have the applicant, you yes. heard Mr. McHugh's question, fence so off. There's a restriction from putting the, the fence in front of the building setback. Right. So the proposal, and I'm gonna go back to this detail if I may. The proposal is to extend the fence up to the building setback, which would be somewhere is in here. And how far is that off of Delta Drive? Uh, 75 feet. Okay. And then the, in addition to that, what I, we had testified to was there will be a smaller fence in front of air conditioning units. So when you're right. looking at the rear of the building, you're seeing the siding, right. the doors and the windows, right. but you're not seeing the mechanical and equipment. How far down is it going to go? It will go all the way down to, to the, the end. wetlands, okay. right, the parking. Okay. So now can this fence be put up when they start their construction for the noise? I would say no reason not to. And the, uh, the other main concern we have would be with the water flow because, um, you know, the wetlands in the back, are they going to control, are they going to manage the water coming over to our property? Engineer, <laughs> <laughs> you're, the, you're the water expert. Uh, how are they going to do that? Okay, as we've managed to get through this hearing without explaining how the stormwater works, <laughs> a quick explanation on stormwater at the site. In the development of the site, there's three separate stormwater elements. There's two small sort of uh, rain gardens in the front, which are less than 12 inches deep, and then there's a much larger contention infiltration basin at the back. Right. So all the water from any of the developed portions, right. the parking lots, the buildings, right. are all going to get piped from the front into this basin and into the back and keep away from coming this way right. and keep away from the properties on the, to the north and to the south. And then where does it go? Does it go back to Delta Drive to the drainage? No, the, the drainage naturally wants to go in the back in towards the wetlands. So any overflow from the basin would then be into the wetlands and follow the wetlands around the back and eventually loops around under Delcy Drive. Nothing from the site beyond the existing parking lot that's there now and the existing parking and the existing existing apartment building right. drains towards Delcy Drive. Okay. So yeah, there is no there is no stormwater in Delcy Drive in the vicinity. Everything drains is going to drain to the back and follow where it goes today. Makes sense, right? Sounds good. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank, right, thank you. Is there anybody else from the public that would like to speak? Move we close the public session. Do I have a second? Good. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So be it. Does the board have any more questions? I would move that, are we ready for that? Yeah. I would move that we approve the application with all the things that we've talked about today being in place with us. Don't ask me to list them all. <laughs> all right, no, no, I mean, fundamentally, you, you got a motion to um, approve the preliminary and final um, major site plan for this application. Um, premised on everything that was adduced during the hearing as far as the agreements between the applicant and the board and what their obligations are. So the record's full. The uh, applicant took the time to prepare uh, response letters. We've uh, uh, considered them part of the submission, so it's all there available for reference. So, Mr. Chair, we have a motion. Uh, if I may, just to clarify, and speaking with Mr. Amari, uh, 
when if you look what you can see on our renderings, the site beyond the existing building is wooded. And he said we would put the fence up before construction. There will be a need to go in. Oh, he, I mean, he left. I'm sorry. <laughs> there will be a need to go in and clear the trees out before we put the fence in. So it wouldn't be construction, but the tree clearing will occur. Then the fencing would. Go he up. might. He might clear some trees for you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I normally wouldn't have allowed that because we were in the middle of a motion. Because there was a motion. I'm I'll sorry. For a second. Me? Do we have a second? Mr. Harvey seconded. All right. Second. Roll call. Mr. Harvey. Four. Mr. Santor. Four. Ms. Wyman. Four. Ms. Camiola. Four. Mr. Moon. I'm not in favor. All right. Four yeses, one no. No, you're, you're there. No. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Allen's. I uh, wanted to remind you we have that request pending for the minor modification of the use variance from two 20-unit apartment buildings to an 18 and a 22. I mentioned that in my opening remarks that it was one of the requests we have tonight. Well, you got a problem because now you got a four to one. I understood you to say, I understood that to be a separate vote. It's a modification of the use variance approval. Okay. You you No 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 we'll we'll have it we'll have on, on no, that. No, no, no. I understand. Okay. Um so Mr. Chair, um council is looking for um an answer on his um request to have a motion to uh Acknowledge the fact that the site has certain limitations and that one building is not going to be 20 and the other be 20 But one's going to be 22 and the other's going to be 18 So for the board's consideration I would be framed in as to a modification of the use variance now I guess the reason I'm him and hawing and sounding uh, Like I'm struggling. I'm really not is because we just heard something which was not entirely favorable for you and I did the arithmetic because it was easy, right? It was four and one, right? So if we do that, you need five affirmative votes, right? To get that modification. So you really want to ask us that tonight? I don't know. Kind of why I was ignoring it. I, I, I wanted to have it heard at the time, but you indicated as a result of the experts. Well, maybe I did your favor. In light of, we just had a vote. They can be another vote. If that was part of it, or? you know. That wasn't part of it. No, I'm saying if it was part of it, you would have just got, you would have been on your way back home. Yes. With a no. Yeah. Right. You're yeah. still, you're, you got another day. You're living another day. Okay. I'm saying now, you might want to talk to your client for a moment. I understand. About, I'll explain to them what the situation is. You're in that, though. You know, it's one of them things. I, I didn't see it coming, and, you know, I, I know you didn't see it coming. How, does it, how do they vote on that or change it? Yeah. Well, that's what we're just discussing. And, you know, I think that, I think if it were me, I'd probably be back at another meeting. Yes. With more people here. But it's not me, and we're not here to discuss it because it's his application, and he's going to tell us what he wants to do. We'll see. Chairman, I would request the continuance of our request for a uh, use variance modification. Uh, we will appear for the, when is the date of that? Sure. We were, yeah, we were talking about that a little bit ago. It's March uh, 16th. Was that what my recollection is? So, so, um, so be it. So you'll, you, 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 you take the win tonight on the preliminary and final site plan, because we just had a vote on your preliminary and final major site plan approval. And then um, 
I gotta say, it's uh, an unusual circumstance. And we'll see you uh, next month for that little piece on the use variance. Okay, thank you. Here we are. And for the record, I just want to say I have three applications for next month. Well, don't they get first dibs? That's what I'm saying. I have three already. Okay. Okay. What do you got first dibs? There. <laughs> well, I heard Mr. Demetrius a fast driver. Thank you. <laughs> All right, Gentlemen, thank you. Thank you. All right, we don't have any reports. Anything from the workshop committee? Yeah. Okay. Um, the workshop committee met Tuesday. Uh, three things were discussed. One had to do with Taco Bell is requesting an extra lane. Everybody wants to become Chick Fil A, and uh, have two lanes of use, and then still have a passing lane. So they'll be putting in one more lane. Uh, I believe they own some of that property where the fence is and they can do it. They, right now they have an, a, a single line. They're going to have, everything's going to merge into a single line when it gets to the window, but there'll be two lines here taking, your, taking the orders. There's going to be a little electronic boxes for both of them. And one line that if you've gotten the line and decided you don't want to do this anymore, you can pull around them. They have that line now. The, the, Double lining is is going to be from what it looked like closer to the um, uh, front, closer to the uh, Delcy Drive part. So that's one of the things that they're you know working on now. The other is a storage place on at 214 East High. Um, there are some issues with water in the wetlands on East High in that spot. Isn't that the third um, one? It's, huh? Isn't that the third storage place? Or fourth? <laughs> I don't know. It's beginning to feel like the no, hundredth One on storage place. Place. Chase, the one on Delcy Drive. you got the other one on Delcy Drive. Now this one's going to be yeah. on the street. It's, this is supposed to be a three-story storage with elevators with access off, off of High Street. Okay. Um, and aren't they... The, the people the building that one, aren't they building the other one too? They're, they're in charge of the one that's on Delcy, Delcy Drive, right? No. Uh, Essex Chase? No, those, uh, yeah, Essex Chase is the same. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm actually losing track of what, what, what self storage developer goes with which site. We have a lot of I'm storage. not sure who the, the It doesn't that help that they changed their names. One of them used about three different names. Yeah, yeah. So, whatever the name of it is, they're working on 214 East High Street. And then the last one, have fun folks, is uh, the people that own Friendlies want to build behind them a daycare facility um, that they're building for a company called The Learning Experience. Um, they're looking to have up to 300 children under the age of six. <laughs> Excuse me. I don't think there's 300 With 25 staff members, only some of whom will be sane. And um, there's not enough room by It's coming Did to you the say zoning chained? board. Huh? Did you, you say chained? <laughs> <laughs> this is, um, uh, there was a lot of discussion about this because, uh, and I'm going to be honest, <laughs> we don't know if we have 300 kids. <laughs> They get free uh, ice cream every day. Huh? That, they get free ice cream. Is that part of the deal? Uh, there could be. They they need to use in the morning. Um, apparently, Friendlies is closed until eleven o'clock, except on the weekends. So while the parents are dropping off the kids, they'll be able to use Friendlies parking lot because in New Jersey, parents have to get out of the car. These are little children. Get out of the car, walk their children to their facility, and sign them in and then they parents can leave. So if you have 300 kids, you need 300 parking spaces during the hours of um, like seven to eight or something like that. Right. Um, reality would be if they were looking more for a, a facility for 150 in my own experience with teenagers and children and nieces and nephews. Um, they we're at the workshop center to find out about things like that. Um, it, uh, you know, how 
far they're planning on going ahead. The, the, they seem pretty intense on on wanting to build this this building behind the um, uh, friendlies. Miss Camille, well, I, forgive me, I, I just must have missed it. What's the building for? Because it sounds to me like they're interested in a parking lot. No, okay. they're building a a, 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 um, a daycare center for young children, and they're going to have classrooms and play sites and and a. Um, and they have enough room for all that? No, I don't no. know. I'm no. not building. <laughs> well, no, you were at the work <laughs> I'm saying no. I'm just saying. They're, they're, that was the you know. Maybe um, in the old Abachi place that closed up. That could. And you got the parking right there. They're going to be in the space that. behind Friendly's There's and space. up to the other buildings that are, are on that street. Mr. Cosmo, do they have enough space for that? It sounds pretty yeah. ambitious. There's not enough space for that. There's, There's no so way. That, that, that property was before this board a couple years ago for minor subdivisions. Mm -hmm. they, they subdivided the back of the Friendly's off. It was a wooded lot or like a wooded part of the lot that they made a separate developable lot. And they just have this very aggressive, ambitious idea for what they might fit. It's only yeah. like an acre and a half, if that. It's just not very big at all for a building yeah. and parking. This, this person owns the Friendly's pro property and that property and has for a couple years, apparently. Um, I thought there was a, at one point, I thought there was a daycare center back there. Across um, the street. Kinder care. Yeah, kinder care, something like that. Yeah, a long time ago. Still there. I don't know, Still there. you know, this is, going to be fun when it comes here. Okay. It's not going to be fun. <laughs> yeah, that's not great. All right. But, um, I mean, you know, we, um, I, I meant to and I forgot to look up the learning experience. They, they had suggested I might want to do that to find out what was going on, to see what it is. I mean, they were saying up to six, but I don't think they really mean that because six would be putting kids in first grade in a public yeah, school right. system, so I don't think they're they're, they didn't talk like they were willing to do that. I, they probably mean, you know, kids up to that point, but. Okay. So keep your, your eyes and ears open for. Um, I think we already forgot about it, but yeah. that's okay. <laughs> okay. So, do we have a solicitor? I don't, I don't. Uh, you know, no, know. Mr. Chair. Um, we're good. And uh, we had an interesting night. and We'll uh, have an interesting uh, meeting on March 16th. Any old business? Any new business? Do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. <laughs> All in favor? <laughs> Opposed, so be it. Did somebody second it? Yeah. yeah.